Welcome to Hot Slice, Pizza Today's podcast about all things pizza. I am creative director Josh Count. Joining me, executive editor Denise Greer. Hello, Denise. Hello, Josh. So real quick, because this is going to be, um, you know, it'll go live at the end of the week on Thursday. And Thursday, right. and this massive storm is going to hit our area and then hit the yeah. East Coast. So I'm thinking about y'all and Please be prepared for all the crazy weather, and I hope you're still able to operate and things through it. Yes, just a, another, yet another hurdle thrown at you in the <laughs> last two years. Sure, just bring it on. Uh, so, but uh, Ready for yeah, anything we, though, right? <laughs> right, right. You know what I'm ready for? I'm ready to get to Las Vegas in March because yes. that is always the first, the first glimmer of hope of the spring is uh, getting, stepping, uh, stepping out of the airport in Las Vegas, feeling the warm te- warmer temperatures, uh, and uh, it'll be here very soon. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't snow in Las Vegas while we're there. No, I'm just well, if, if it does that, uh, you know, oh, okay. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay, because we're still with all the pizza people, and it's still right. exciting, and it's still just the, the most fun week of our entire year. Um, yes. And, our and it guests- won't be... It won't be, a, I'm saying, it won't be 110 degrees like it was in August, at least. So. Oh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm, I'm so happy to have it back in March. Um, right. <laughs> so, but our guest is actually one of our keynote speakers. Uh, yes. So we have Rocky Shanauer on the, on the call today. Why don't you tell, what, yeah. what are we talking with Rocky about today? Well, first of all, he's our Young Entrepreneur of the Year. Uh, mm-hmm. He was our previous Young Entrepreneur of the Year. He was... Supposed to do a keynote at uh, Pizza and Pasta in 2020, 2020. and 2021. <laughs> of course, they, yeah, they were canceled. So we got him on the big stage at Pizza Expo. It'll be a day three keynote. We have three keynotes this year. That's a little different. Yes. We usually just have two. Now we have three. So Thursday, uh, you got to be sure to, to be there and, and see Rocky's uh, keynote. I, I, I think it's going to blow everyone away. Uh, not Absolutely. to put too much pressure on you, Rocky, but I know you will because <laughs> he inspires us. I know when we yeah. visited him uh, in uh, his, his Park Street Pizza in Sugar Creek, Ohio, I mean, I, I walked away so inspired. I'm like, yeah, yeah. he knows, I, I want to do this now. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of those things because it was a small town, 3,000 people, just to see what they were doing there yeah. with uh, that, that amount of population was just mind boggling. Yeah. And just his business sense of the systems and everything he has in place. He just, he just knows what he's doing and he's so smart about it. Uh, So I think people are going to really soak that up that, that he can really give them a lot of knowledge. So, you know, without further ado, let's just jump right into talking to Rocky. Here's Rocky. Performance Food Service is proud to deliver high-quality products, innovative technology, and custom operational solutions to restaurants of all sizes across the country. The flagship division of Performance Food Group, with deep roots in the restaurant industry, Performance Food Service has been the exclusive distributor of the Roma family of brands for more than 65 years. This signature relationship has allowed Performance Food Service to become a leader in the pizza and Italian segment of food service nationwide. Your pizza is more than a craft, it's your legacy. Make it extraordinary with Baccio Exceptional Italian Pizza Cheese. Created by expert cheesemakers for a superior melt, endless stretch, and its signature kiss of buffalo milk, a taste that is rich and creamy beyond compare. Build your legacy with monthly cash rewards and marketing support through the Baccio Gold Club. Schedule a demonstration at bacciocheese.com slash hot slice. Pizza is your legacy. Build it with Baccio. All right. We are live with, well, not really live, I guess we're tape we're delayed with, <laughs> with uh, Rocky. How's it going, man? Good to see you. Nice to see you guys. Super happy to be here. Man, so, has it really been like three years since we went to your place? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I guess it has. Yeah. It, three you know, because it's one of the last few places we went to, so <laughs> it still feels like it was like, you know, just the other day. Yes. Because so, we haven't been in that many places since. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's wild. The last few years have been so crazy. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it's nuts. So you know, real quick, let's just kind of get off. Let's just kind of get off to the good start of like what is going on with you guys right now. I I know you have, uh, of course, Park Street uh, Pizza, and then um, you have Baller Street, which was a mobile unit, and mm-hmm. big things are going on with it right now. So yeah, jump into that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, we've been operating Park Street. That's our a restaurant here in Sugar Creek, Ohio. Uh, but we launched a mobile company 
about eight years ago. And that was a, a seasonal business here in Ohio up until this year. Um, we partnered with a few guys down in Texas and moved our manager, Amber, down there. And um, we actually, so she relocated last December, just a month ago. Um, and we are just in the process of launching that company down there in central Texas, um, just north of Austin, um, as a mobile uh, catering business. And so we're setting up operations, um, setting up a central kitchen, um, just creating partnerships and opportunities down there. So kind of doing what we did here um, and just doing it down there where we felt like, you know, that provided a lot of opportunity with weather that Ohio just didn't have, even right. though we had pretty, pretty strong following here and we had lots of business. It was just one of those challenges that we felt like, you know, having a seasonal business that operates well six months of the year and then it can't really operate from November through March, it just kind of felt like this is a nice next step for us. Yeah. So, so you you don't plan on having it, uh, you know, any more catering in another truck in, in Ohio or is it just, just the one in Texas? Yeah. So we're not, we're really just moving away from that um, okay. branch of this here in Ohio. Um, we want to focus here in Ohio on store growth. We feel like Ohio is, we can do a better job of opening restaurants um, whether it's a carryout restaurant or a, a dine-in carryout delivery restaurant like we have, um, we think our time is better spent focusing on that here in Ohio and exploring the mobile thing in Texas. Yeah. Good idea. Now, with, yeah. The, with the mobile business, have you had any challenges? You know, I know you, um, you've got somebody down there, uh, you know, kind of boots on the ground, but have you had any challenges with, you know, trying to set things up from afar right now? Um, you know, while you're here, while you're in Ohio? For sure. There's been a lot of challenges. I mean, we, like, like when you open any new business, there's a lot of things that you don't expect that are happening uh, right now to us that even though we had everything that we needed for that business, we sent, um, we shipped our truck down, we shipped all of our equipment, all of our tools, all of our supplies, everything we needed other than food. Um, and we have already figured out all the systems. So recipes, product development, how we execute, how we cater, all of that stuff. But the things that you don't think about are opening up a central kitchen in another state, different requirements. I mean, even from county to county, city to city, we're finding certain areas are much more difficult than others to operate in as a mobile business. Um, we actually had one of our partners, um, found a location and it was a, it was zoned residential, or I'm sorry, zoned commercial, but it turns out it was not zoned the proper type of commercial. Right. And so we were months into building a kitchen in, in this old oh, office. Oh, man. <laughs> and I mean, we put a walk-in cooler in, we were, we redid the floors. Oh. We, um, we were in the, pro the day we found out, we were in the process of, we had the whole dug and the tank in the ground for a grease trap. Oh and they said, hold on, wait, we went to pull a permit and they said, um, you guys aren't zoned for a restaurant. You're zoned commercial, but it's like light, red light office, or I forget what it was. And, you know, me as in Ohio and being in the restaurant business, like I just, you know, you have partners, you, you rely on your partners and, not that they didn't do their job. They, they really did. It's just, it's one of these things that this, this weird loophole, the way yeah. that was zoned that, you know, not pointing fingers at anybody that nobody would have saw this coming, but yeah. it really made us pivot. Um, so when, when we all found out about it, we were all just shocked, but it's like, well, all you can do is just problem solve and start figuring out where do you go next? So we've actually um, moved away from that property and we are, um, we found a central kitchen that would lease us space. So we have a temporary solution now. Um, so we've set up shop there. We have X number of hours a week that we can be there. We can keep all of our stuff there. And so it's going to allow us to, to stay on track as far as opening dates and um, some of the commitments we already had in place. But yeah, it's definitely a curveball for sure. That sounds like it. zoning can be a mess sometimes because if, you know, like you said, you just don't know, like there's so many subsets of, 
you know, well, this is own commercial, but then it's, it's got to be this type of commercial. And, the, you know, so I, yeah. I get that. That's hard. And apparently it was like the property right in front of this location, we could have done it. But because oh. this, like a, a double property that the previous owner split, because this one is in, in kind of more of an off street, it, it, it was different, but you know, we've been, we've been working through products, um, trying to get source the right cheese, the right pepperoni, those things. I mean, the latest one is just finding a pepperoni that we like that works for our, our application. Um, because some of the things that we know that we like that we use here in our operations here, we took for granted how easy it is to get because we've used yeah. them for years. And you know, like, Iso pepperoni is one of those products that um, we use in our op all of our operations, and so we were buying three different types of pepperoni from Iso, and so you know it wasn't the top of my mind as far as that wouldn't be available in Texas, um, but so far we have been tr struggling to find it. So yeah, you know that's an Ohio company, and so I don't know, it's just one of those things. I gotcha. Man. The challenges just keep coming up, right? So, what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> what's happening? What's happening with with your shop in Ohio? Uh, what's What's going on there? What's the update with it? Um, well, Archery. good things have been happening. Um, we've fortunately been staying really busy. Um, we have just continued to try to, um, you know weather all the challenges that we have in business right now. Um, sourcing products, supplies, supply chain stuff has been challenging. Um, but, you know, I, I see that that's definitely across the country. I mean, we're seeing that in Texas, talking to people that are operators down there that are as bad or worse than where we're at here in Ohio. Um, talked to some operators down there that were, were struggling just to get boxes, things like that. We haven't had that much of a problem, but some to go packaging, different things. Um, but, you know, last year with the staffing challenge, that was top of mind, one of our biggest challenges, but also uh, one of our biggest things that we really spent time being intentional about. Um, and so we kind of saw that, that becoming an issue last spring, last summer, and knew it was only going to get worse because in the fall, I, I don't know if it's like this for everybody, but for us, uh, when school goes back in session, that is always the hardest time for staffing. Yeah. And so um, we wanted to get ahead of that. And so we really put a lot of measures in place to try to get more buy-in from our team to help with retention, but also um, kind of create some more um, recruitment strategy to where we would have people talking about working at Park Street and how yeah. how great a place it is and why you would want to work there and so um you know we reevaluated wages we uh added employee benefits we started to do some really cool stuff for work anniversaries and just making sure that our people felt great about being a part of our organization and so that has helped us a lot mm -hmm. over the last six months of you know i see still see a lot of people struggling and people locally here um with restaurants and you know even weekly you're seeing um more and more restaurants and different categories of restaurants that are, are just closing. They're just basically saying on social media, like, well, we're closed until further notice because we just don't have staff to operate. Yeah. And that's, it's really scary to, to see that. And, but it makes us feel really fortunate that, you know, some of the measures we put in place are helping not, not that we're perfect, but they're definitely helping um, keep, keep things moving in the right direction. No. How are you currently standing? I'm sorry, Denise. I was just going to ask how you, how are you currently standing uh, with employment right now? We're in a pretty good place. I feel pretty good about it. Um, actually, we have, because we've put some of these measures in place and we've been really, really focusing on, um, instead of like I was saying with Baylor Street, where the, the mobile company is um, seasonal, it was always really hard to develop people for that company that mm -hmm. could could grow with it because how do you have a manager that is engaged full-time six months of the year and then you don't have something for them to do the other six months. So you can't really build like long-term with, with a seasonal operation the way you can with, with a, with a restaurant that's open year round. So our intention right now is to uh, make sure that our people know that there is 
next steps for them. And so what that's doing is it's allowing some of the young people that are really um, talented, hardworking and capable and driven to do it to see that, okay, I, you know what, I can stay here and I can have a future here. So um, we're working really hard at, at um, getting that second location here in our area so we can have a next step for people and just continue to grow people. So because we've been of that mindset, we're building a lot of um, our younger late teens, early twenties people into some great leaders that are going to be able to step up and, and help us um, grow. So yeah. that's been really refreshing to see some of these really bright young kids step in into these roles. It's great news. Absolutely. So with yeah. those, the programs that you set into place, kind of how did those materialize? You know, did, you know, were they just, you know, you're just trying out different things and seeing what resonated with your crew um, or, you know, how did the, how did those programs really come about? Well, we, um, I, I guess it, it wasn't easy and it took a lot of conversations and a lot of planning. Um, we just wanted to make sure that people felt valued and we wanted to try to hear our team and understand what, you know, there's a million ways you can, you can incentivize people in a job and it's not always just what their hourly rate is. Um, you know, their, their, their hours that they work, uh, work-life balance is really important. Um, just, just feeling appreciated being in a space that, um, you know, we learned a lot just by talking to people about, you know, different age groups value different things. Um, and even the same age group people that value different things. But we feel like if you can create a, a really healthy work culture where, where it feels good to be a part of that team, that then you're not, it, it's not all about money. There's more to it than just the bottom line of their paycheck. It's more about the overall experience having people that they like to work with, having a, a good, safe environment that they feel appreciated, they feel um, empowered. And so we, we implemented an anniversary reward, which was something that, so we have a um, long-term friend of mine that um, we brought into this company about three, three or four years ago. Um, he's, he's our director of operations, kind of our HR guy. We're a small business, so he wears a lot of hats. But between um, having a person like him who he comes from the medical industry, um, and so he's worked for some big hospitals and different things like that. So he has kind of a, a fresh perspective on what a larger company would do um, or could do. And then we bring the small local uh, independent mentality. And so we kind of mesh those together and find something that, that works that isn't, that is more than just saying, Hey, you, you get paid 10 bucks an hour and you get free pizza and that's, that's your compensation package. So we've put together, he's helped us put together a really good um, array of compensation in a more traditional sense, like health insurance, um, retirement package stuff, um, HSA uh, matching, um, some other things like that. Um, but we've also done some other creative thinking things like anniversary awards. So mm -hmm. this past year, we, we start, started implementing some of those. And those have been, I think, been rewarding and, 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 and impactful for people. Um, so year one, they get a Yeti with their name on it, branded Park Street. So it's something they can bring to work. They can, they can use as they're working and enjoying their you know, free beverages and whatnot. Um, year two, they get a hoodie. Um, a, a really nice quality hoodie with our branding on it. Um, and then year three, a $500 reward. Um, and, and we start stepping it up. And the, the, the idea is that I want to, I want Park Street to be a place, I want all of our companies to be a place that people, um, that they talk about and that they rave about what it means to be a part of that team. Yeah. And that, that hopefully we're doing things that are a little bit unexpected. So mm -hmm. this past year we gave away. Um, so we're also including like all inclusive vacations into the, into oh, the wow. reward. So, <laughs> That's crazy. I want to come work for you. <laughs> I, I, I have always found like Courtney and I as the owners, 
you know, you need, you need time to get away and refresh, to come back and, and be a part of this and give so much of ourselves to this restaurant. And our team's no different. And so we always would take a three or four day trip whenever we could squeak it in, you know, back before we had kids. Um, or even once we had kids, vacations are just very refreshing. And so um, to be able to give our team members, whether they're just a general staff member, a manager, uh, you know, a full-time, part-time, it goes for everybody. Um, if you put time in and you're committed to our restaurant, we want to be committed to, you know, giving back to you. So we're, um, we gave away multiple um, two-day all-inclusives. We gave away one four-day and then one seven day so yeah. I'm, you know I, i've always said um man i want to take this team to the beach someday i want to take it to mexico yeah. and um and you know i'm probably never going to be able to take the entire restaurant to mexico for an all-inclusive vacation but yeah. i can do it a person at a time yeah and That's and amazing. i you know if if i'm if i'm an employee and i'm i'm bragging to all my friends that yeah you know i i've you know, I've been at Park Street for four years and they're giving me an all-inclusive, uh, you know, stay somewhere. I mean, yeah, you're bragging to all your friends about that, which brings in, of course, more people. So, yeah, that's that's fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely. Sure. That, that works. You know, that's investing. I mean, that you are investing yeah. Yeah. in your team. You're investing in recruiting. Um, you know, it, it, it has that ripple effect uh, throughout your whole company. So that's awesome. You know, yeah. one thing I remember when we were at your place is you had that seasonal menu board where you were bringing mm -hmm. in some seasonal dishes like each season. Um, are, are you still able to do that as much, especially during, you know, supply crunch is probably even more now with supply crunch. <laughs> so yeah. What do you have going we, on right now with it? I mean, it's, we definitely are still doing that. Um, continuing to always have fresh things on the menu. Um, our customers expect that from us and it keeps it kind of fresh for us as a team members too, to be able to be producing different food year round. So um, we try to always have a seasonal pizza. We try to always have a really good fresh seasonal salad. Um, and sometimes they really focus on local ingredients and other times they're just a unique menu item because yeah. here in Ohio and at this time of year, We've got a foot of snow on the ground so there's yeah. not a lot growing in our area but we can still have intention with creating unique menu items so we've we found that having limited time um offers for things really drive demand so we may only have a salad for three or four weeks but once people know that we're doing it and they know that they've had it the year before and they love it um we we see a lot of movement on that for a couple weeks and then after a few weeks it starts to kind of slow down and they go back to their normal favorites, but it works well because it gives them, you know, they're always looking for what that next fresh thing is. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, it's been a good thing. Um, An urgency, we, you know, yeah. with the, uh, with yeah. it just having it three weeks for sure. It's like, well, we, we can't wait around. We have to go right now. <laughs> yeah. And we around long enough that we've, we've kind of worked through the ones that work and the ones that don't. And so, I hate to say like through COVID we've kind of went on autopilot with some of that where it's like we've kind of just stuck with tried and trues instead of pushing our, our boundaries you know we do sometimes where we're pulling a lot of new stuff out we've kind of just stuck with all right operations are more difficult sourcing is more difficult we don't have necessarily the extra labor to just try things and see if they work so we just kind of pull out greatest hits so we have things but um you know, but it still keeps it kind of fresh for people. Yeah, I got you. So what, uh, what, you know, here it's Jan, it's the end, or sorry, we're now into February. I keep thinking yeah. we're in January, you know, we're into February, you know, what, um, what are you excited about with 2022? You know, what, what's the things that you're, um, that you're really looking to either in the industry or at your, at your business? Um, you know, what, what are you excited about? Oh, man, there's so much exciting stuff. Um, I, I'm really excited for Pizza Expo. Um, we're bringing a big team to Pizza Expo. Oh, I'm, really, um, I'm really excited because we haven't even announced this to anyone other than just our, our very core team. But we do have a nice. second location um, pinned down. And so right. at some point this year, you will be seeing us opening another location here in Ohio. Okay. And so nice. we're super excited 
am actually talking to my team about, um, like most of the team leaders and managers tomorrow, um, about this opportunity and, and getting people's in the right mindset for it. Yeah. We'll be new, some new general and assistant managers and just really, it's, it's just giving everybody that step. So, um, we see that being a really, really big, exciting thing. Um, we want to take our Park Street brand and and kind of bring it into 2022. So mm -hmm. we started the brand in 20, oh, or 20, 2003. So long ago, I forget how to, how to say that. Um, Almost 20 years now at this point. Yeah, um, <laughs> been doing it for a long time. And so, um, you know, there's, there's things that obviously work really well and people react to um, and that and that we don't want to change but there's other things that knowing what we know now after coming through COVID for the last two years and and just learning about you know what we care about for people um, you know we're more intentional now than we were you know when I was in this business early on it was any hours we can that, that are profitable we're going to be open any any food that we can sell that's going to help drive um, this business forward we're, we're going to, we're going to try that. And now we can be a little bit more selective about, okay, let's, well, as we create this next business, we can think about um, what hours are we going to be open? What's good for the team? What's, what's healthy for the manager? How many hours do we want these people working? What, what products set up, set us apart in that community that makes sense for what the community's needs are. Um, and so, you know, and just utilizing technology, we've been, um, we changed POS systems, uh, in 2020, which was really tr challenging. Um, we were, we were set to do it in March of 2020 and that's when COVID hit. And so we put it off to the summer and, uh, and that didn't make it any easier. Yeah. Uh, but, but we've been slowly, but surely every, every year implementing new technologies and stuff into our systems that help us be more efficient. Um, and so I'm just excited to, to, to launch a, another variation of what we do, but in a, in a, in a more modern way that I think, um, you know, will, will give us just a new perspective on, on what yeah. we do. So how far, uh, how far away is it from your current location? Um, or do you not I, want I, to tell us yet? Oh yeah. You don't have to tell us. That's, that's, that's okay. Thing exactly that. And, and most of my local people aren't going to hear this until I don't know when. So, uh, but uh, no, it's it's probably about a twenty minute drive. Okay. So it's close enough that our our company and our brand is very well known. Yeah. But just far enough away that for a carry out, I talk to a lot of people in this in this community. It's it's one of the it's a larger city than what we are currently in. Mm -hmm. um, the the town that we're in, Sugar Creek, is is somewhere between three and four thousand population. And so we're very much a destination spot. We have a full dining room um, where this is going to be just a carry out. And so we're really looking to appeal more to that direct audience of maybe five or so miles surrounding yeah. us. Yeah. And um uh, and so it's a, it's a more densely populated area, but it's a, it's a place that people I often talk to. They're like, oh, we love Park Street, but you're just far enough away that it's not convenient mm -hmm. to come get carry out. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a good bridge. Oh, that's Fantastic. Awesome. So you mentioned Pizza Expo, and yeah. you are one of our keynote speakers at Pizza Expo this year, the Thursday <laughs> uh, day three keynote. So let's, let's take it back for just a second. In 2020, you were supposed to be keynote at uh the uh, pizza and pasta northeast and then yeah. the next year okay well we're gonna run it back he's gonna be keynote <laughs> at 2021 and when that one was canceled as well so we're like we're, we gotta get rocky in there so so pizza <laughs> expo yeah. the the bigger stage now so it's like bigger, you know, better so stage yeah. You know, <laughs> so yeah so we're finally finally rocky is going to be hit, hit the stage at pizza expo this year uh so what, what do you got planned for us so it's a little sneak peek yeah. Um, I mean, it's funny because I, every time that I was scheduled to do this, I had a different notion of what I wanted to talk about. Yeah, and that. my changed a lot, you know, I mean, yeah. because had I had talked in 2020, we were right in the middle of, of the first giant surge of COVID and mm -hmm. there's a lot I didn't know. And even 
you know, six or eight months ago, there were still things we didn't know that we know now. And so um, I think I have, uh, I, I have a different, more well-rounded approach to what I, what I want to bring to that conversation. But really, I mean, my, what I'm excited to talk about is just talking to my fellow pizza operators that um, are small operators that are doing their best to learn and, and get to that point of success that we're all trying to reach. And I just learned so much from being in those seats all those years um, from when Courtney and I were in our early 20s and we were going to the expo for the first time um, and learning from all those other people that have come before us. So I, my, my vision for my keynote is um, basically um, that I want to kind of, I'm going to call it like lessons from a once young entrepreneur. So uh, I'm tweaked <laughs> into for, uh, six months after I, I earned that title and yeah. uh, now I'm 41 and yeah. definitely I don't think most people would consider me a young entrepreneur anymore but being almost 20 years into this but um, I want to I want to talk to people who are new into the industry I want to talk to people who are like me that they've been around for a while and, and hopefully just give people a fresh um, you know if I can have a couple things that really hit people that I've found that work for me that for managing or operating or whatever I mean there's I know that in that audience there are people who know way more than me about everything but hopefully I have something to, to give them that inspires them or they find useful or helpful when they go back to their place they, they keep it in the back of their head like I always did yeah well, you've definitely you inspire us. So we uh, we've all, yeah. we've gotten a lot from you. So you uh, you've definitely got a lot to uh, bring to the table. And I know everyone is just going to really enjoy and soak it all in because uh, I will be sitting there soaking it in as well. <laughs> so, for sure. <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today and uh, and giving us your your knowledge, man. It's it's always a highlight to to hear what you have to say and and the industry highlights. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, I love what you guys do. I've learned so much from the magazine and pizza expo and i um, just so grateful to be able to be a, a little part of it. So thanks so much. We're happy to have you. And I guess we'll see you in uh, yeah, we'll we'll eight weeks, seven weeks. Yeah. I don't know. Good Not long. About a month and a half. Something yes. Like yeah. Something like that. <laughs> see you then. We'll see you then. We'll see you then. All right. All right. Thanks, Rocky. Take care. Yes, take care.